Thank you all for coming. Okay, it's funny, when, when you get invited to speak at an event like this, you often wonder who's going to come and listen. But, but there's a lot of you, so I'm really looking forward to it. So I told you that we were connecting a bunch of our products, right? But that's not the only thing that we did, right? Because we, you know, what do you do once you got a bunch of connected products? And I'm sure some of you are already thinking about this, right? You need to connect the places that you use those products. So if you think about, we sell tools into factories. I told you, factory is one of our biggest customers. Um, so so bringing, in, bringing in a solution that takes those connected tools and ties them together in a way that helps to automate the factory, even if there are our own factories, it brings tremendous value to, the, to, to our company as well as to the companies we sell into. Something you probably didn't realize is next time, and, and you'll, 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 you'll probably see this every day for the rest of your life now, the sliding glass doors that you would walk in and out of when you walk into, say, a Publix or a Kroger or a Walmart, right? If you look, somewhere on that door, somewhere on seven out of the ten doors you look at will be our Stanley logo. As, as, as a guy who'd come out, come out of AT&T where we'd already built a platform and already gone through some of the scenarios, I had a lot of ideas of what we could do wrong. There is no way... No way that I wanted to go to work and worry about them guys coming in and saying, hey, somebody hacked our battery, and you're the guy responsible for protecting it. So whatever we came up with, whatever platform we put in place, had to have world-class security. And then development-focused, in order to, to, to really build a, sim a solution that is so easy that people will go and adopt it quickly without being able to, to hold, them, hold them to it or, or entice them in some way, is, again, the most important aspect. This began back in July of 2015. There was nothing. We didn't have anything. We had a battery that you could control from your Bluetooth phone, and that was it. And today, we've uh, gone through the selection process, stood up the platform or platforms, and made, made them available. And we've got four IoT solutions either in production or entering productions in, recent mar in, in nearby months. We couldn't have moved that fast if it weren't for the platform selection that we made. Because there, was, there would have been no way that we could drive the adoption levels to, to the level that we have, unless it was as easy as it is. It's, uh, we wouldn't be able to continue to use it if it wasn't as reliable as it is. We, we needed to make sure that our deployments were not just cloud-centric, right? They had to be able to work on premise. I talk a lot about the edge when I'm in the office. I said, listen, listen, we're, the, uh, the, the internet, in the IoT, the internet is important, but if, this, but if the internet goes down, if you're in an environment where, the, where your, your connectivity is lost, your system still needs to function. If it's, you know, because I came from digital life, I would talk about a security system. If, you, if you're bringing security or some kind of life safety aspects to a particular location and the internet goes down, you can't tell people it's okay if you know you step into an unsafe area and get hit by a bus. And so ultimately, we, we selected ClearBlade as one of our partners, right? And we use them where we have an edge component, for sure. That is one of the, that, that is their biggest differentiator, is these guys really get it. They understand that the solution has to work even if the internet isn't there. And if it is there, it needs to be reflected up in the cloud. And if there's a hiccup in the middle, whatever happens down on the premise needs to be replicated up in the cloud without any, with, you know, reliably, and without any extra effort. So, how do you do it, right? How do you pick an IoT company? When I, did, when, I, when I started 16 months ago, there were, I think one of the analysts from, if anyone's here from ABI Research, I think one of the analysts said there were 230 different IoT platform providers out there at the time. Today, there's over 400 companies that identify as an IoT platform. So how do you pick them? Well, you could go off and talk to a bunch of people, right? We did, and this, this slide sort of ref, uh, represents a small portion of the folks we talked to. These are the ones we, we, that I at least talked to more than once. Um, but it, it's not enough, right? You can't possibly make a decision to satisfy all those needs for a business the size of Stanley that, that just by talking to somebody. So we identified these five companies that we, we, and we put them to a hands-on evaluation. We brought them in, and, and this, is the, this is the part I like to tell people is the most important part of my, 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 my job, really, was we brought in these five, these five groups where we could stand up our own instance. We did. We would de deploy it into a cloud instance where we couldn't, if it was a platform as a service, we would just gain access to their service. 
And then I simply built the same set of applications five times. I would build an application that would pump data in to each one of these platforms, and I would build the end application on the, outs on the uh, application tier five times. All of those platforms are really strong. All of them are really good. It's difficult to, to, to navigate and to, to pick one out of all of them, but when you're trying to satisfy the needs of a company the size of Stanley Black & Decker, it, it's got to be broad coverage. You've got to be able to kind of go out there and, and work. Um, and, and, but these guys really shined. They, they really stood apart from their ability to, to bring compute, the same compute from the cloud to the, to the premise is, is, is really priceless. You can, um, uh, basically you can script their, script their application, script their environment, utilizing um, their rules engine, and you can, you can log into the platform, decide you want the rule to execute at the cloud, and then if you later decided you really wanted it down on one or more of the edges, you could just drag it down to, the, to one or more of the other edges pretty quickly, pretty simple, so it's very nimble. When I got there, the guy said to me, he says, I don't know anything about this IoT, I just want a database in the cloud. And I said, well, okay, that, that, but how long did it take you to do that with just a database in the cloud? And he said, well, again, two and a half years. We've since then, by, by leveraging the platform that we bought, which is um, from Aaron's company, Clearblade, we were able to go now in, in a matter of months to market, right? So we go from concept to, to, a, to an app in the App Store for, say, an Android or an iOS app in a matter of months.